Good morning and welcome here to this uh, beautiful sunny day uh, here in uh, Chini Manor. Uh, hopefully you're all well where you are. Uh, it's great to uh, be with you this morning, albeit virtually. Um, of course, some of you that would normally be with us uh, aren't able to be with us at the moment. Um, you may watch it later, I suppose. Um, people going back to work, people going back to school, um, people perhaps for the first time in a while kind of having some kind of return to normal-ish type things, but still far from, far from normal. Uh, welcome here um, this morning. Uh, let me just have a quick scroll down. Yes, yeah. Today we remember. Uh, if you're on the if you're on the um, app, it's actually the visit of the Blessed Virgin Mary to Elizabeth. So um, <laughs> it's kind of quite hard to think about Christmas now, but we're building up to or the we have this um, reminder of of Mary visiting Elizabeth right at the beginning of of, of Gospels. Um, but also it is a day where we remember uh, other people. So I thought I'd read again from uh, Saints on Earth. And uh, this is today we remember somebody right back who died around about 165, a chap called Justin Martyr at Rome. So uh, a long, long time ago. Justin was born in Palestine, but was a Greek by education and upbringing. He was a philosopher who, after studying the teachings of the Stoics, Pythagoreans and Platon, Platonists, 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 that sounds right, doesn't it? Turned finally to Christianity. He is thought of as the first Christian philosopher, teaching at Ephesus and then in Rome, where he opened a Christian school. Justin engaged in debates, both with Jews and pagans, often wearing his philosopher's cloak. Justin's understanding of the Christian faith was that it did not involve a rejection of the philosophical disciplines. Rather, he gathered all his previous learning and used it in both defending and explaining the gospel. He saw Christianity as the only sure and worthy philosophy. Three of his writings have survived. In his two apologies, addressed to successive Roman emperors, he sought to explain Christian worship in order to reveal its innocence. And his dialogue with Trifo, he sought to demonstrate that the Christian Eucharist superseded Jewish sacrifices. Thus, through Justin, we learn much about early, early Christian worship. He was particularly faced with the challenge of explaining Christianity in a time of much misunderstanding. He dealt with charges of immorality at the Eucharistic feast and charges that Christians were guilty of sedition and atheism against the empire's own gods. However, Justin's main aim was apologetic. He would seek to explain the Christian faith and doctrine in a manner that was accessible to all. Although he was particularly responsive to the Greeks, or although he was particularly responsive to the Greeks, in an age of superstition and myth, Justin clarified Christian teaching on the devil and demons and emphasised the liberating power of God at work through the Holy Spirit. Justin argued that Christianity was the true philosophy, the culmination of all previous philosophies, which only contained partial truth. He was the first Christian writer after Paul to grasp the nature of the gospel. He was martyred by being beheaded in the reign of Marcus Aurelius, to whom he confessed his faith after refusing to offer a sacrifice to the gods. Here we have a quote from the dialogue with Trypho. God has announced in advance that he has joy in all the sacrifices offered in the name of Jesus that are made in accordance with the precepts of Christ. That is, in the meal of thanksgiving of the bread and cup, which is celebrated by Christians in all places throughout the earth. Uh, 
another uh, founding member of the early church, uh, another martyr, another person that we can thank really for for the, the for for where we are today. God working through him, and he working with the power of the Spirit um, to be able to kind of stand up for what he believed and to to kind of argue it. Hopefully you have this in front of you now. It's probably going to be uh, from now on just a bit different to the last few weeks. We enter a kind of new season after Easter, after Pentecost. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. But as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he has set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like our but as grass. We flourish as a flower in the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from old and endures forever on those who fear him and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now going to use Psalm 85, Psalm 85. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Lord, you are gracious to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the offence of your people and covered all their sins. You laid aside all your fury and turned from your wrathful indignation. Restore us again, O God, our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Will you be displeased with us for ever? Will you stretch out your wrath from one generation to another? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, <coughs> and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord will say, for he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they turn not again to folly. Truly. His salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Trust shall spring up from the earth and righteousness look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give all that is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Most holy God, when we come to you fearing that truth condemns us, show us that truth is one with love in your word made flesh, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Um, I've added today, I've actually added um, the um, Old Testament reading. So if you're on the notices, you will notice that today's reading uh, from the Old Testament is actually on there. And it's a, it's a beautiful um, part of the Bible. For those that joined us with Zoom last week, it's, um, it's largely that part. Um, 1 Samuel 2, 
verses 1 to 10. 1 Samuel 2, 1, 1 Samuel chapter 2, beginning to read at the first verse. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord. No one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The bowels of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down, excuse me, he brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honour. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord hid adversaries shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of course, that wasn't what we read at Oasis last week. That was the bit afterwards. Sorry. Um, Hannah had pleaded for a son. Uh, she went to the temple and prayed so fervently in her heart, but also her lips were moving. And Eli thought that uh, the priest there thought that she was drunk and scolded her only for her to kind of explain what she was doing. And then God answered her prayer. And this is her response to that, her words of praise. We have this canticle. Send wisdom forth from your he holy heavens, from the throne of your glory. Send what is pleasing to you. O God of our ancestors and Lord of mercy, you have made all things by your word. By your wisdom, you have formed us to have dominion over the creatures you have made, to rule the world in holiness and righteousness and to pronounce judgments in uprightness of soul. Give us wisdom that sits by your throne. Do not reject us from your servants, from among your servants. For we are your servants with little understanding of judgment and laws. Even one who is perfect among us will be regarded as nothing without the wisdom that comes from you. With you is wisdom. She knows your works and was present when you made the world. She understands what is pleasing in your sight and what is right according to your commandments. Send her forth from the holy heavens, from the throne of your glory send her, that she may labour at our side and that she may learn what is pleasing to you. For she knows and understands all things. She will guide us wisely in our actions and guard us with her glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Send wisdom forth from your holy heavens, from the throne of your glory. Send what is pleasing to you. You'll notice that canticle comes from uh, Wisdom, chapter 9, verses 1 to 5. A, C. I've seen A before, never C. And then 6, 9 to 11. Wisdom you will find in the Apocrypha. So it's it's an, a group of non canonical books of the Bible which aren't in the canon. So they're not um, 
they're, re they're not quite regarded in the same way as the books of the Old Testament, but they're from that time. Uh, I believe the Roman Catholic Church do include them uh, in their Bible. Uh, they have the same Bible as this, but they have these extra, few extra books as well. And there's nothing kind of wrong with them, um, but they're not quite seen as canon in, in, in kind of the Bible that we might use. Uh, if you have a Bible with an Apocrypha, you will find wisdom in there, um, amongst other books as well. But we do come to uh, a gospel reading now. Mark chapter 3, verses 31 to 35. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Before we come on to the um, Benedictus, uh, Rob and the music group and the um, team choir have recorded some parts, um, some, um, some bits from Taze, and we heard one bit yesterday, um, but Rob also sent me some more stuff yesterday morning and I thought it would be nice this week uh, at this point to, to, to hear those and perhaps to dwell on the readings that we have just heard uh, whilst listening uh, and kind of meditating and thinking about um, um, what is being played. So I did a funeral the other day and came up with some really strange pronunciations of pieces of music. So please do forgive me for this. Um, really, we need somebody, we need someone like Rob who might be able to pronounce this correctly. Um, to say sorgente, when you see Rob, he'll give you the correct pronunciation. But we're going to listen to this now. And as soon as it's finished, we'll say the Benedictus and then move into a time of prayer. <laughs> Oh, 
Mary, you have found a dwelling place on earth, O Christ. Remain forever in our hearts. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. The tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high, shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In the womb of Mary you found a dwelling place on earth, O Christ. Remain forever in our hearts. We now come to a time of prayer. So let us pray. If you could respond, please, with Lord in your kindness. When I say Lord in your kindness, could you please respond with hear our prayer? So let us bring our prayers, our thoughts, our worries, our anxieties, our joys and pleasures to Almighty God. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with. We thank you for this beautiful morning. We thank you for the, the beauty of the earth, the, the wonder of your creation the wonder of nature that we see outside, the wonder of each other and our fellowship with each other, our friends and our family. We pray, dear Father, that we will always be grateful for what we have, that we will count our blessings, be able to name them one by one. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for this day and this week ahead. We bring before you whatever we might have on our calendar, in our diary, or just in our heads of things that we have to do. And whatever we do, dear Father, we pray, Lord, that you will fill us with your spirit so that we will do it in your name. That we will do the best that we can that by our words and our actions, we may please you. We pray, dear Father, like the disciples so long ago at Pentecost, that your spirit may fill us with confidence to put your word into action, in word and deed. So guide us this day with your wisdom, dear Father, to seek the path that you have set before us and to hear your voice in our hearts. Lord, in you, Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. We lift before you, Lord, those who are going to work today. So many people in so many key roles in key jobs. But perhaps those people in particular who are going back to work for the first time today 
or perhaps those who are going back to some kind of normality. We pray for those venturing back to school, children, teachers, parents. Pray, dear Father, that you will offer them protection. Pray, dear Father, that you will watch over and be with them. Pray, dear Father, that you will ease their anxiety and maybe curb some enthusiasm as young children come back together, so eager perhaps to embrace, so eager to get back to normal. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. And we lift before you, Lord, those whom are on our hearts at this time, those whom we are concerned and anxious about, those who are unwell, those who are not able to appreciate the lovely weather or able to, to do things like normal at the moment, for those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. Lord, we lift before you those who are on our hearts. We especially lift before you this day, William. And we continue to pray for him, Lord. Continue to pray for him and his family. That the doctors and the nurses and all those that are looking after him will have wisdom and understanding about what um, exactly is happening inside his body and be able to treat it. And I pray, dear Father, you will give him your healing strength and be with his family at this time. We pray for all those, Lord, on our hearts. All those, Lord, who are known to us, who are suffering, are in pain. Those who are anxious, those in despair, we pray, dear Father, that you might be their hope and be their healing. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift before you those who are bereaved, those who are grieving, but unable to grieve in the way that they wish. Lift before you, Lord, those whom we know have suffered loss. Ask, dear Father, that they will know your hope and your comfort and recognise the hope you have set before us all through the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, in your kindness, hear our prayer. So equip, equip us and enable us, dear Father, this day to do your will and to do your work. Collect for today. Mighty God, by whose grace Elizabeth rejoiced with Mary and greeted her as the mother of the Lord, look with favour on your lowly servants, that with Mary we may magnify your holy name and rejoice to acclaim her son, our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hope you have a great day. I hope you stay safe and well.
Uh, I'll look forward to when we're back all back together again. Um, so I hope you get a chance to enjoy the sunshine. I don't think it's supposed to last all week, is it? And, and that's always the case, isn't it? When kids start going back to school, the weather changes, it seems. Um, or is it the other way around? The weather improves. Oh, probably something we just make up. Um, but enjoy today. And let's share the uh, church prayer. The Lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Amen. 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 Have a great day. God bless.